Welcome back to Thunder on the Beach. After calculation, after the final racing round, Gary Porter has amassed enough points to become the 2010 King of the Beach. Our final freestyle order, Spider-Man, Bad Habit, Black Stallion, Bruce, Gunslinger, Avenger, and our 2010 King of the Beach, Gary Porter in Grave Digger. Spider-Man has come onto the track and is attacking the track for his final freestyle, whips it into a great donut. Wow! Sideways! The rear steer kick just a little bit coming down off the car set. Went Carlton with some great driving to bring the truck back down. A very awkward landing. Back into another donut. Heading out for the RV obstacle. As you can see on our cameras, it's a rainy, dreary day. The weather has really deteriorated on this final day of action in Wildwood. The drivers aren't affected by this weather whatsoever. They're going to put on the best show possible in whatever conditions they're provided. Spider-Man really going after it with possibly his best run of the weekend. Cross-threading the tabletop. Nice wheel. Oh no! You see a four link bar right there. That's going to be all for Spider Man for the weekend. The score is only going to be a four. Gotta be disappointing. Bad habit. Ripping onto the track with some great momentum. Joe's always all out in freestyle, but he's got to be after it in this final freestyle. RV Big Air! Joe is really on an assault in this final freestyle event. He's been shut out from freestyle victories this weekend, so you know he's going after cross-cutting the tabletop. For many of you that don't know out there, Joe Sylvester recently made a world record Guinness Book attempt at the Monster Truck Long Jump, previously held by Bigfoot at 202 feet, Joe Sylvester cleared 208 feet, and this is bouncing back after a horrendous, and I simply mean horrendous, practice crash a week prior. The truck almost completely destroyed. A lot of work went on. Joe came back, bounced back, made a tremendous jump for the Guinness Book of World Records Monster Truck Long Jump. And Joe is out today with great momentum, putting on a fantastic show for the Wildwood fans on this dreary day. Just an all-out big air assault. This truck is simply absorbing everything that Sylvester throws at it. Whipping it around on the tabletop. I thought he was going to whip it into a donut right on top of the tabletop, but not quite. Heading out towards the front stretch. Looks like Joe's going to whip it to a stop. The score is going to be a tough one. An eight. A great score for Joe Sylvester and Bad Habit. Possibly his best run of the weekend. Mike Waters on the track. Going after the RV. Saw him lose his Domino's delivery sign. I guess that's his way of saying he quit. Vodder's been sporting that all weekend long. Oh, it's the Saturday Night Special. This is a Sunday afternoon show. We didn't get the Saturday Night Special last night and the show that you just saw from the Saturday Night. But Vodder's in the surprise group, whips it out. On Sunday afternoon, always great to see the reverse of the Saturday Night Special, as he calls it. Potter's attacking the car set. Wow, awkward landing there. The car set seems to really be going away and really throwing the drivers off to the side. We've been watching how that developed through the RV. Everyone's been leaping over it, and Potter's cooks right through the side, saying, 
no one else gets to do this, I'm going to have the fun right now. The store is only going to be a four. Looks like he did some motoring around while we weren't looking. Brute is on the track. We caught up with Stephanie Kotloff from Team Stream. Now, Stephanie, what have you guys been working on? I understand there's been a lot of crashing throughout the race. We've basically been working on everything. Everything. So uh, we're looking at another brand new Brutus and Avenger. Um, it, anything that you've uh, about strengthened or, or further repaired? Any specific? Well, actually, yes. We had some body damage on the Brutus, so we had to fix that. Um, then Brutus broke out uh, also an axle staff. So Brad and Chris worked on that while the rest of the team was working on Avenger that broke a ringing thing in the back. So you had to take both lanterns apart, you had to take the center section off. And then we replaced that. We broke a four-link bar too, so we had to change the four-link bar. And uh, there's, you know, all kind of little stuff. We worked last night until 1.30 in the morning. And so it was all for the fans. As you heard from Stephanie, never a dull moment came scream, proving that even when the truck appears perfectly operational on the outside, there can be some significant issues on the inside that need to be attended to to keep the truck at the top of its game. Bergeron really attacking the track, some great moves. Bergeron with his surfing maneuver in the Brutus truck on the tabletop. Oh no! A killer wave just knocked Bergeron off his board and he is on his head. Looks like he tried it one too many times and hooked her right and over she went. A good run for Bergeron, a seven. Not gonna be the lead. Still, Joe Sylvester in bad habits got the top position. Scott Hartsock and Gunslinger's out on the track. Heading out for the RV. Nice air, big run for Scott Hartsock. Cross-threading the tabletop. Hartsock seems to be attacking the track nicely. The biggest problem with a track this large and, and with some of the obstacles as they are, being mostly racing obstacles, is you don't want to motor around too much, you'll lose a lot of momentum. Hartsock got a fair amount of momentum here. Nice launch once again over the RV obstacle. Hardsock seems to have quite a good run going on. More big air over the RV. Maybe not quite the spectacular nature or the, quite the momentum that Bergeron just had or even our leader Joe Sylvester had. Looks like that's going to be all for Hartsock. He's slowing to a, a crawl. The score is only going to be a five. Not going to be enough for the win here in our final event at Thunder on the Beach. Jim Fuller is out on the track after a great showing in racing, but not enough to keep him in the beach contention. You know that's not going to hurt him for freestyle. Cole is going to come out and put on a great show no matter what. He off to a good start, cross-threading, RV hits, attacking the car set. Looks like we just saw some blue smoke at the bottom of the truck. That's never healthy. Sign that the truck is burning fluid, probably oil in this case though. Occasionally you will see other fluids get onto the headers or other hot surfaces on the truck. Donut out towards the RV. Combos it into a launch over the RV. Gonna head out and cross thread the backside of the tabletop. Another great launch there. Almost a slack really coming off. Good momentum for Jim Kohler. Again, maybe not the spectacular nature that we're gonna need to see. And the truck has died. That looks like it's gonna be all. The score is gonna be a six for Jim Kohler. Our final competitor for our Thunder on the Beach weekend is Gary Porter in Gravedigger number 12. This will be the last time that Gravedigger number 12 is seen in competition. The last freestyle for Gravedigger number 12. 
I expect a huge run for Gary Porter, sending Grizzly to the throw out in spectacular fashion. You know, Gary's had a long relationship with this truck, and he's got to have some sentimental attachment. And really wants to send the old girl out with class. Porter cross shredding the tabletop. Now some of the rollers. I thought he was going to whip it into the donut. So far, the momentum lacking just a little bit. Threading, adding something a little different. We haven't seen a whole lot of cross threading the moguls in the center of the track. Now going backwards up the tabletop and whipping it into a donut on the tabletop. everything in sight, but they're not yielding the, the spectacularness that may be necessary. Oh, and Porter's on two wheels! Oh, it looks like he tried to surf, kind of like Bertrand's been doing all weekend on the tabletop. Porter adding his own flair, surfing on the backside of the RV obstacle. Porter's really been out here for a long time. Really put on a, a spectacular show lengthwise for the fans in Wildwood. See some of the rain that we've received just today. Porter splashing through a big puddle. At this pace, I'm not sure Porter's ever gonna stop. He may just drive until the truck runs out of gas, whipping it into a nice donut. And cross-threading the tabletop. Now getting in some more cross-threading Getting a nice pop off the side of the, the roller in the center of the track. Heading back the same direction he just came. Whipping it into a donut, I think. Nope, just whipping it around. Spattering sand everywhere. over the car stack, a lot of the obstacles are really starting to disintegrate after two days of competition. Porter trying for a slap. Oh, no. We've got a lot of smoke coming out of the bottom of the truck. Looks like he may be cooking a tranny. After all that, oh, the tranny is just history. Gary Porter out there running the Grave Digger so long. He has just burned down the transmission and Grave Digger 12 is on fire. You see Porter safely coming out of the truck. The score is gonna be enough to give Porter the victory for the day. A great finale for Grave Digger number 12. Gary Porter drove that truck until it simply wouldn't go any longer. We've had a great time all weekend. We've got to thank George Carpenter, Mike West, Thunder Moto, Caden Berry, Ross Bonar, everybody that participated in this event. It's been a great time. We've had a great time on Action Tracks. Until next time, we'll see you then.